Hey, what's up guys? This is Java Puppy. This video is part two of going over the collection class I created called Bag of Characters. If you haven't watched the first part, try to watch the first one before watching this video. Alright, let's quickly go to where we left off. The first method we're going to go over is remove method. Now, obviously this is a very important method to implement. We want to be able to remove a character that we specify some things we could keep in mind are, first, we need to check if we are indeed trying to remove an English letter, since our bag won't ever contain other characters. Second, what could happen is the character we want to remove may not be in the bag. In order to work with this case, we will make the remove method return a boolean. Now this won't really affect the way we do the remove operation, since it wasn't going to return anything anyways. So what we will do is we'll try to look for the specified character in the bag. If we can find it, we will remove it. We want to remember and then to decrease the count when we do. Also, I think it's important to point out that once we remove the character in the bag, that index will contain no character. So it'll be empty, but it won't affect the capacity of the bag. If we can't find it, we will just exit out of the loop and return false. The next method is trim to size. This method is useful to have when we are using static collection classes where the capacity does not dynamically respond to adding and removing. When we end up with a lot of empty indexes, we want to be able to just remove those and cut the capacity to save space. For example, if the bag has capacity for 5, and the bag contains only one character at index 4, which is the last index, then when we call this method from the bag, it'll make the bag smaller to fit the contents of the character, uh, which is only one character in this case. So the end result would be the bag with the capacity of 1 with the char character in the first index. So now, next is the union method. This is a static method, which means that it is a method that can be used without an object of this class. Uh, what this method will do is return a bag that has the uh, characters from two bags in the parameter. This could throw an out of memory error because we are creating a new bag to contain all the characters. And so in the body, we create a new bag called union bag, which has the capacity of both bags in the parameter and we will just call at all from method to add characters from the first bag and then the second then we return the union the bag using the uh, at all from method definitely made coding this part really easy next is a stretch method it could be called increase capacity or something else but since our class is a bag stretching sounded more interesting to me Again, in order to do this, we cannot change the capacity of an already existing array. So we need to create another one with the increased capacity, and this might throw an out of memory error. So we just try to use try and catch for that. And in the body, we create a new character array of doubled capacity of the original. The reason why we create an array instead of creating a whole new bag like we did in Union is because all we are changing is the array, not anything else like the count. We could use a for loop to get this done, but actually there is an even simpler way to do this. For example, there's an array copy method in system that copies arrays for us. So we'll use this method here. The first parameter is the array we're trying to copy from. The second is the starting index of the set array. The next is the array we are trying to copy to. The next is the starting index of the array we want, to, we want things copied to. The uh, next is the number of elements to copy from the source array. This allows us to copy all the elements from the this.bag to stretched bag. And finally, we will assign this stretched bag to the bag array uh, of the calling object. Now the rest of the uh, methods are pretty easy to understand. 
compared to what we've just gone through. Get empty index is a method we used earlier to find the first empty index in the back so that we know where to add an element when we call the add method. In order to do that, we go through the entire array to see if an index contains 0, which is the empty one. If so, return the index, otherwise return negative 1. The fact that this method returns negative 1 when there is no empty index is really important whenever this method is used so that it doesn't throw array index out of bounds exception unnecessarily. Next, we have get capacity method which simply returns the capacity of the bag which we can find out because every array has a linked variable. Next, getter method it just returns the count of the bag. Next one is this toString method. This is a very important method to have. It may not seem important if the class isn't designed to do anything on the console, but it is still extremely important in debugging. So in the toString method, I want to see the capacity, the count, and the contents of the bag. Getting the capacity and the count is easy since we have those getters. Uh, getting the contents of the bag can be a little bit tricky. This bag is a class, which means it is a reference type, so the variable doesn't actually contain the contents, but only the memory address. This is why we had to import java.util.arrays and arrays at the top, because this allows us to use arrays.toString, and then we can just pass the array we want contents from, and it'll, it'll just give us the string. This part here is actually not necessary, but I wanted to display it differently when the bag is empty, so I used the conditional question mark, if true block, and then colon, then if false block. This is a cool Java syntax you can use for a certain if-else operation. Then finally we have the isAlphabet method to check if the character in the argument is an English letter. We can do this quite easily because Java characters use what's called the ASCII code, which means that every character is enumerated, which just means that each character has a number associated with it. For example, uppercase letter A is stored as 65, and uppercase letter Z is stored as 90, and everything else in between. The lowercase goes from 97 to 122, so we need to create a conditional for that. Uh, a good way to think about how to come up with a conditional is think about what are the cases when what are the cases that we want to return true. If the character is within these parameters I mentioned, it should be true. First part checks if this is an uppercase letter. The second part checks if this is a lowercase letter. Then we want to join these two with or because we want either to be true to return true. If we had AND here instead of OR, it would always return false because a character can never be an uppercase and at the same time lowercase. I create an overloaded method, uh, which is a method with the same name but different parameter. I needed to create this because I used this in add many method where I need where I needed to check an array of characters. We just need to know if in the array there is at least one character that is not within the al alphabet. So we look through the whole array lo looking for one that is not. If so, return false. If we go through the entire array without returning false, that means all the characters pass the test, so return true. Now this is the end of this class. There were some methods I could have implemented or not implemented. It really depends on the design. And a collection class like this one, on its own, won't do anything cool. But if there is a project you want to create, collection classes will be very powerful. So I hope that by going through this class, you feel better about why collection classes can be useful and how they can be implemented. After this video, I'll, we will go over more conventional data structures and collection classes with different strengths and weaknesses.
And by implementing the data structures, we will also learn a great deal about algorithms. This is it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks.